and welcome back to another great episode of uh, Hashtag Screw the W2. And my guest today is Josh Plave of the uh, company Wall to Main. Josh, welcome to the show. Hey, John. Thanks for having me. You bet. Now we'll get into a little bit of what uh, Wall to Main is later, but for uh, my listeners that maybe aren't familiar with you or know your story, can you take us back to what was your you know previous W2 job? You know, what was it like? What was an average day like for you? Sure. So uh, the last one I worked was with PepsiCo. Uh, okay. I worked within their dispatch operations team. So I sat in our office and basically got all of the orders uh, in for every day for um, either wholesale stores or uh, vending machines or okay. 7-Elevens, different routes for each type of uh, delivery. And um, I would put them on trucks. I would arrange the deliveries. And then I would basically spend the rest of the day analyzing the routes, trying to find optimization uh, around them, calling the locations and figuring out how we can kind of like cut expenses and stuff and, and uh, work the, the routes into their best uh, shape. So uh, okay. there's a lot of the, the same thing over and over every single sure. day, just, just a lot of monotony over and over. Gotcha. And I suppose there's only so much you can do to optimize where it's like, well, if you can cut through this alley or just run over this uh, field of grass, then we're going to cut a half a second off our delivery time or something <laughs> oh and half the job is just getting yelled at that their traffic is atrocious oh and, yeah exactly there's only so much you can do so <laughs> in the middle of nowhere tennessee it's not that bad i can't imagine <laughs> right so now with uh with that uh with uh your previous job pepsico did you have a uh like certain moment or maybe even a series of moments of you know by I can't do this till I am 65 or retire or nope, I got to get out of here. Or what was that moment for you basically? Um, so that moment was probably a previous job. Uh, oh, okay. I worked before that. Um, I was working at Pepsi in Denver, but before I was living in Boston uh, and this was before I moved to Denver. So I was working for a company called uh, it's now Dell EMC. They're a cloud computing company. Okay. I spent the whole day uh, on Excel, which has paid dividends in my current business. And it's, <laughs> it's awesome that I got the experience. Um, but it was a lot of basically every day I would I would cut uh, these different spreadsheets and and find these different um, analysis that I would have to, you know, find for a, a two level up manager. And so basically I would I would cut all this stuff up. I would put together a presentation. I would ship it off to my manager who would ship it off to their manager and their manager, manager's manager. And I never got to hear what the result of the work that I put in was. I had okay. no idea what was happening with the efforts that I put in. So I was growing really, really um, upset and just kind of generally tired of that job. And there was one day in particular, I remember I showed up for work. I parked the car in the garage and I physically could barely, I, I couldn't get myself into the, into the office for 20 minutes. I had this wow. visceral physical, physical reaction to actually walking in. I ended up going in, but that's kind of like when I started to realize that I, I, it just wasn't for me, um, kind of working on W2 and, and answering to somebody and at least at the very least not seeing the direct benefit of everything I was doing day to day. Right. No, it definitely makes sense. So, um, with that, Josh, and I know, uh, obviously you had that moment on a previous job before you were at PepsiCo, but what was, you know, once you had that realization, once you started to realize, um, things were going to go different, uh, what was your steps to get out of the rat race or what were your next steps to get out? So I had been uh, starting to take a look at real estate for a while. Um, wasn't able to kind of fully dive into it uh, until my company, when I was at Pepsi, they decided they were going to uh, move our offices from Denver to Dallas. And I, I wanted to stay in Denver. Uh, so I ended up not moving with them. And so they basically had us work for another year and started to move a good chunk of our workload off to the Dallas office until they could fully transition. And then they gave us some severance. So that started to give me the time that I could use to basically study and fully dive into real estate. And okay. so I spent that year uh, basically looking into every avenue I could. You know, when you jump <laughs> and start in real estate, you you know, you start looking, hey, am I going to flip properties? Am I going to wholesale? Yep. <laughs> By say, you know, uh, short-term rentals. And you kind of work through everything. Um and so I went through all of that for the year. I, I was listening to podcasts, reading books. I was spending all yeah. of my time basically crunching as much uh, real estate information as possible. Yeah, um, no, I, yeah, I could definitely uh, empathize with you there. I did the same thing. And 
my previous job, I was on the road anywhere from one to four hours a day. So it's like, well, might as well kill the time listening to podcasts left and right. So yeah. uh, once you kind of had that plan in motion, uh, how long did it take you to fully exit the rat race? And looking back, do you remember exactly or do you just kind of vaguely remember what your last W2 day was or what your Freedom Day was? Uh, I distinctly remember it because it was my birthday. They happened. To, oh, okay. they happened to close the office at the end of Q1, and my birthday is March 31st, so it's oh okay the end of the quarter. Uh, so it was a wonderful gift. Uh, nice. I basically got uh, easy day on my birthday and got to say goodbye to all my friends in the office. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that was it. Was nice, but it was you know it's also kind of like a scary moment. I I didn't move out of like a lot of people who move out of. W-2s, they've built up enough, either another company that can supply uh, the the income for their, um, to offset what they were earning in the W-2, or they have enough passive income or whatever. I hadn't really built that yet, and I was starting to build my company at that time. And so uh, I I definitely transitioned into a life where I wasn't making as much as I was at the W-2. And okay. I was, I'm very much okay with that in life. Like I don't mind, uh, I don't have to make as much money as humanly possible. The whole goal for me of what I'm doing in my, in my day to day with running my own business is making sure that I have time freedom, that I have the ability to be here with my daughter at home and, uh, experience everything that, that she's going through. And, mm-hmm. you know, all of that, I want to obviously, uh, earn as much as I can, but I'm okay with the trade-off that this provides me. I was tired of, of like you said, the long commutes, yep. and sitting in offices for so long. Uh, when you when you live in Boston, it's also even worse because you go to work, it's dark, the sun comes <laughs> up while you're in the office, and it sets before you leave. So you, yep. come, you don't get to experience any daylight uh, during the winter. So yeah, um, just having that that ability to kind of uh, manage my own time is is the most critical thing to me. Gotcha. And now you said, uh, it was, like I said, it was kind of the best birthday gift, uh, March 31st. Uh, what year was that then that you left the W2? Uh, that would have been 2017, I believe. 2017. Okay. So about six, a little over six years ago as a recording of this. So I'm um, looking back now, Josh, uh, six year, you know, going back six years, any regrets or anything that you missed from your W2 days or think back of like, well, gosh, I really miss X, Y, Z. Um, I mean, I, the the thing you miss the most is the consistent paychecks. It's uh, mm-hmm. especially in real estate. It's you, you get paid when you know the, the property closes or when you sell a yeah, property, yeah. and so there's it's definitely it's a different life to adjust to. It's um, larger individual paydays that are separated, you know, by months at a time. Yeah. Um, so I miss that, um, but outside of that, there's there's not much more that uh, I, I miss. Um, sorry, I, I forget the the beginning of your. your first question there oh no just uh yeah if there was any regrets from leaving the w2 job yeah no that's that's about it um, okay I, I love the everything that's it's afforded me since then gotcha and then that flip side josh uh you know we're going on starting on year seven since you've left the you know safe and secure w2 job um since 2017 what's been the best part of your journey since leaving the w2 and becoming an entrepreneur or a uh, real estate investor um you know the best part i would say it, it, I, I kind of would sum it up in being able to live my life during the week. Yeah. Uh, so previously when I was working at W2, I'd either have to go to the grocery store late in the evening after work <laughs> uh, or, you know, battle in Costco with people on Saturday yep. and Sunday. Uh, and so the the ability to kind of go out and do things, go to the gym, uh, go to the grocery store, take care of errands in the middle of the week has been awesome for me. It's me and all the other self-employed people and the senior citizens. Yeah. <laughs> nice and quiet. Um, and, and that goes for everything, uh, you know, at home with my, with my kid, I can, I can take her to school when I need to pick her up when I need to. I'm there for all those moments when I was living in Denver, the most critical thing for me that was one of the main reasons I went into this originally was I was able to ski in the middle of the week and not have to, uh, you know, basically I was living in Denver. And when you ski on the weekends, you deal with three, four hours of traffic to go ski oh, wow. or five hours. So, uh, going, being able to ski in the middle of the week and, and ha- avoid those crowds was amazing. It really changed my entire life because I, I play such a heavy emphasis on, on skiing in my life when I was out there. And, 
Um, it's little things like that, whatever you're happy with in life, whatever brings you happiness, uh, having the ability to kind of choose when you, you do that is, is amazing. All right. Makes sense. So now Josh for, uh, you know, a lot of my listeners, you know, they might find themselves or currently are in, you know, a similar situation that, you know, this job's a grind. I can't keep doing this. I leave when the sun's down and I get back when the sun's down or, you know, whatever the case may be, but for, you know, whatever reason, I can't leave because of the consistent paycheck or my pension or the insurance or 401k or whatever the case may be. And I just feel stuck here. There's no way I can get out. What uh, words of advice or words of encouragement would you give them to maybe make that first step to building a path to getting out of the W-2? Yeah. I mean, it, it comes down at the very beginning in my mind to maximizing your time. And, you know, you're not going to learn right off the bat what the exact avenue that will get you out of that will be. So spending as much of your free time, whether it's driving to and from work or when you get home, or maybe you got a slow job and you can do some of it at work, um, educating yourself on whatever avenue you want. If it's real estate, I mean, Spend as much time as you can learning all the avenues that, uh, whether you're active or passive, that you can invest in, you know, ways that'll help you replace um, most or all of your income yep, and get yeah. you that ability to move out. So uh, for me, it was the education piece. Um, I mean, I'm pretty analytical, but I think a lot of people kind of need to know what they're diving into before they cut, you know, burn <laughs> their uh, yeah. and that was, that was the key. That was the thing that unlocked everything is when I had at least a, a general idea and picture of, of where I could go. That was, okay. that was makes sense. So, all right. Well, as we uh, wrap this up, Josh, and again, I want to thank you for taking the time of, out of your schedule to share your stories, uh, share your stories to my listeners, but I call this the, uh, hashtag unscrewed moment, where if you want to get into detail of, you know, what you do with your company, Walt Maine, or anything you're excited about for 2023 or any new projects that you're hoping to complete by the end of the year. Yeah. So uh, basically the, the goal of Walt to Maine is to help folks with retirement accounts. So if you left your job or you have a job right now, most of us have 401ks yep. uh, either they're sitting around, they might be sitting in the stock market or in you know money market accounts uh, that haven't been doing too well over the last year or two. <laughs> yep. Uh, so my goal is to basically, you can actually use what's called a self-directed retirement account. And so mm -hmm. my goal is to help people understand how to use those retirement accounts and invest them into alternative assets. Specifically, I work within multifamily. So if, you know, investing them into a large, uh, commercial real estate property is a, a great method. It's what I do with all, of, uh, me, and my family's retirement accounts. So finding the right properties that work for investors using those retirement dollars is important. Um, and, and right now we're looking at uh, a number of properties. We're actually doing a, a development deal right now uh, here in Charlotte. So just looking across different asset classes as we move into, you know, whatever economic uncertainty we're in uh, has been critical. But uh, yeah, that's that's mostly our goal is is providing people the education and resources needed to use those accounts and then ultimately okay. the investments available uh, to maximize them. Sounds good. Makes sense. So, and uh, uh, for those uh, listening to this, I'll have uh, the show or in the show notes the links to Walt to Maine, so you can check out uh, uh, Josh's resources. And I'm a big propon proponent of self-directed retirement accounts as well. You know, you don't need to deal with the ups and downs. Maybe mostly downs, like we've seen in the stock market. You can invest in other things besides stocks, bonds, and mutual funds in your retirement account. Yeah. So with, it, with that said, uh, thanks again for coming on the show, Josh, and wish you the best of luck for 2023. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me.